Good morning and welcome to CMC Markets on Monday the 17th of October in this quick look at the week ahead and today I'm going to focus on bond markets in particular because we've heard an awful lot of narrative in the past few days about the significant decline that we've seen in UK gilt prices relative to the decline that we've seen in German 10-year prices and US T-bond prices. So I'm going to have a look at that in the context of this Bloomberg chart that I've got up here in front of me. And we can see here the spread between the UK 10-year and US 10-year. And you can certainly see that the differentials have come in quite considerably in the past few days. But you also have to put it in the context of where they were um, at the end of June, um, pre the Brexit vote. The reason this, this gap widened out to the extent that it did was as a large result of the fact that obviously the UK voted for Brexit. That then meant that the Bank of England signalled that it was going to ease monetary policy quite considerably to try and offset the shock that the Brexit vote could conceivably cause. And as a result, you saw the differentials between UK gilt yields and US Treasury yields widen out to well over 1%. Now, these differentials have started to come back. Um, but they are still well beyond the levels that we saw um, at the beginning of June prior to the Brexit vote. So what does that essentially mean? Does that mean that people are losing confidence in UK gilts? Or is there an increased pro probability that ultimately UK inflation could actually start to come in an awful lot higher? I would argue that the former is probably less likely than the latter. I think UK inflation expectations have risen quite markedly over the course of the past few months. That's certainly not any surprise when you consider that UK inflation at the end of November was at minus 0.1 and in August it came in at plus 0.6. The significant decline in the pound is inevitably going to push up inflationary pressures in the UK economy. And I think that is what is being reflected in this particular chart for UK gilt prices. We've seen them coming quite considerably. This is where the Bank of England eased monetary policy here by 25 basis points. It also instituted an extra 60 to 70 billion pounds worth of QE. Since then we've topped out and started to ratchet a little bit lower. So ultimately this this move higher has been pretty much written off on or been negated on the basis that ultimately it's very unlikely that the Bank of England is likely to ease monetary policy further. In fact, some UK policymakers have come out and suggested that ultimately the risks of acting further to ease monetary policy could actually be um, counterproductive. Kristen Forbes on the MPC has suggested that ultimately further easing carries significant risks that inflation will run away. And that's certainly been reflected in bond markets elsewhere, certainly in the US as well, and Germany, where bond yields are actually starting to move higher. Now, if we look at if we if we look at the UK gilt yield here, we have broken down from these trend from this trend line support from the April lows. We are now heading towards the 200-day moving average. So, this break lower would appear to suggest that potentially there is further downside in UK gilt prices towards this trend line support down here. But that will only bring us back to the levels that we saw in mid June. So, still fairly fairly low in historical terms. And let's not forget that in June. UK gilt yields dropped from 1.4% to 0.86% in the space of a month. Now, most of that decline in the bond yields is has has been reversed. We've gone up to around about 1.1% now as as reflected by this decline in prices here. Let's also look at US treasuries because they also do appear to be breaking down as well. They've broken below their 200-day moving average and look as if they could well correct lower on the basis that ultimately the Fed could well raise rates as soon as the end of this year. Now while Janet Yellen has um, raised expectations that the Fed might actually look through a slightly higher rate of inflation, I still don't think that really changes the narrative or the calculus with respect to a US rate rise. And ultimately the decline in US Treasury prices has has been no less, uh, has been no hasn't really been that different in terms of where we were from the peaks 
in July, albeit it's been slightly more gradual than the move in UK gilts. It's a similar sort of story as well on German bunds, where we've also broken below the 200-day moving average on prices, and yields are now well into positive territory, and almost, almost back above the levels that we saw um, prior to the Brexit vote. I'm paying particular attention to these June lows here for any further indication as to whether or not we get higher yields on a German 10-year. Now one of the key, I think one of the key drivers of whether or not we'll see higher German yields will be not only the ECB rate meeting um, later this week but also what happens with EU CPI. I don't expect EU CPI to come in particularly hot. We've already seen that We've got that we've got that number out later today around about 0.4 percent. If that comes in slightly weaker or slightly higher, I don't think it's really going to alter the narrative that much. It'll be particularly interesting, I think, in terms of the tone of Mr. Draghi's press conference and whether or not he gives any indication as to whether or not he will extend the current QE program beyond its expiry in March 2017. So I think that is going to be particularly important. This week we've got UK inflation data and that's likely to come in well in excess of the numbers that we saw in August. Expecting CPI to come in around about 0.9% from the 0.6% that we saw in August. Also retail prices are expected to come in around about 2% and that's up from 1.8% in August as well. So slightly hotter inflation could well exacerbate the decline that we've seen in UK gilt prices. The biggest problem that we've got at the moment is the value of the pound. And that has that does look to be carving out a little bit of a base around about 120, 121. I think how that reacts going forward will be very, very key. I think the key level to watch for on the upside on the pound is this level between 124 and 125 on the upside. And obviously these, these combined lows around about 120.90 and 121 on the downside. Certainly keeping an eye on those numbers. We've also got UK retail sales out later this week. Any indication that the UK economy is showing some any form of deterioration could well be negative for the pound. But the big question is how much of that is priced in. So keeping an eye on the inflation data out of the UK, the US and the EU for later this week. That could be a key determinant, I think, on whether or not the pound is able to push higher back towards the 125 area. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.